this presentation uh, by Master Khair. I, I think he was quite articulate in, in defining the challenges we have, which we can, could relate to the issue of duplication, harmonizing the whole process of accreditation and registration. That's quite a cumbersome process for us, uh, as you know. It takes more or less two to three years from conceptualization to having the programs accredited both and registered, accredited and registered, both at NQA and at NCHD. And I think that is a process which has, can compromise the ability of higher institu uh, education institutions to respond to the market needs on time. But then, and besides the registration process, you still also have to market the program. So that lengthy process really is something we need to, to look at. It. Uh, my second observation is the topic of articulation. It came across almost all the speeches. It's something which has been highlighted since yesterday. But I would limit myself to linking the issue of articulation to the articulation from Tibet to higher education institutions. Uh, I think we need to map up this process properly before we say, let's articulate. We, we must be clear what are the competencies we want the students or the learners who will be following this program to what to exit with. That should be really well defined because I believe uh, if the, those advanced competencies are well defined for those particular uh, programs, then we can articulate, then the articulation process can be sorted out. But to assume at the moment to just take uh, students graduating from Tibet into higher education, for example, UNAM, that is quite challenging. I remember I was part of the team which engaged with uh, NTA on the agriculture, the possibility of articulating in terms of agriculture programs. There were quite a lot of discussions which went into that, and to, until today, that could not be sorted because there were differences in terms of what are the competencies the students should have to articulate versus the competencies or outcomes which we want to have with the UNAM programs. This remained quite a high a, a challenge, and I believe it can be addressed when the competencies are well defined and we can then see how the competencies align to each other, to each level has uh, been worked out. Uh, one thing related to the competencies is do we want to have as outcomes uh, prototypes when students articulate at higher level or do we want them to produce another dissertation or a thesis, which is what the current formal system is doing? What would be the best return on investment for the country uh, with those type of competencies? And another issue related to that, and uh, which actually also relates to what the last speaker was saying, you have to see, analyze the space in which all current uh, Tibet practitioners who articulated into formal higher education programs. What did they really do? What was their impact? Most of their studies or their research outputs was looking at the perceptions and attitudes that is not, I don't believe that contributes to knowledge creation in the Tibet sector. 
And if that is that time, if we want to advance research in Tibet center, in, in Tibet sector, we should have to be clear the type of research outputs we want to see. And I don't believe that can be advanced by studies on perceptions, attitudes, and knowledge around the Tibet sector. So the, the, the bachelor programs in which they articulate should really be reflective of their competencies and be able to deliver the outcomes which support knowledge generation or product generation in the Tibet sector. Uh, Related to that was the aspect of design thinking. I think high-level design thinking is a possible uh, tool we can use to define the type of competencies we want to see in the higher levels within uh, articulation from Tibet into uh, higher education. Uh, then, uh, we, there was also observation that arts is neglected, the development of arts. We are proud that we are having good programs in arts at the University of Namibia. And we work very closely with College of the Arts in terms of articulation. It is not perfect, but we have been able to articulate a lot of those the College of the Arts students into UNAM programs. But one thing which also assisted there is because UNAM continued to offer a diploma program in arts, performance and visual arts, both performance and visual arts. And these programs could allow for quarter students to articulate into these programs and eventually continue with their uh, bachelor program. But I think there are lessons there which we could learn in terms of how this articulation worked out and how we can take these lessons into other disciplines. Uh, my last comment is on teacher training for pre-educational education. I, I think this is another issue which <clears throat> needs to be well thought through and uh, agreed between the institutions. What are the type of competencies we expect these teachers to have? What should they be, they be advancing once they take these positions? What are the options we have? Should we articulate qualified artisans at a particular level into teaching pedagogy and make them teachers? Or should we train them to be instructors? And I believe there is, in pedagogy, there is quite a difference in terms of being an instructor and being a teacher. The qualities, the competencies, the skills one should have, I believe, are very different. And if we can define that and be able to agree on those, then I believe the Ministry of Higher Education and Basic Education could then facilitate the process for us to be, or higher education institutions like UNAP to be, or any other institution to be responsive to this need. I believe it's a need out there and it needs to be addressed. I thank you. I'll stop there in the interest of time.